Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a Christmas cozy mystery recommendations video. These are all Christmas cozy mysteries that I have read before, absolutely adore, and wanted to recommend to you guys if you are looking for a really fun Christmas cozy mystery. If you are looking for brand new co Christmas cozy mysteries, I do have a video on that which I'll link above in the cards and in the description for you if you want to hear about new Christmas cozy mysteries. These are ones that have come out in past years, but I wanted to recommend them they're ones that I personally really love and honestly some of these I'm rereading this Christmas season anyways because I think they're so good. So let's go ahead and hop into this. Go ahead and grab some tea or something warm and cozy and let's go ahead and jump into our first Christmas cozy mystery book. Okay so our first Christmas cozy mystery is by one of my favorite authors ever. This is one of my favorite cozy mystery series ever and it's just incredible. It's amazing. It's so good. I had to go out and buy it. I reread it. I've read it like twice now. It's one of the best cozy mysteries I've ever read personally and that is The Twelve Clues of Christmas by Rise Bowen. This is part of the Royal Spinus Mystery. It is a historical fiction mystery taking place in England in the 1930s and it follows around our protagonist Lady Georgiana or Georgie as they call her in the book and her various sleuthing exploits. This is a close-up of the cover which is really beautiful. I love the artwork for this series. I think it's super fun and basically this is now the second one in this series. So this is the 12 Clues of Christmas and just this December her newest one came out and it's called God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. I'm actually on a waiting list to get that right now and I'm super excited because it looks amazing. So this is number six in this series so you would be jumping into the middle of the series. However, like all cozy mysteries, this one you can pretty much jump in at any time and you won't have too hard of a time keeping up or anything. Um, and basically Georgie, she's kind of looking t forward at Christmas and it's kind of going to be drab. Her mother is away with a boyfriend she doesn't really like. Her um, love interest is away in South America and she's just kind of looking to be snowed in in her dreary castle. Um, and the storyline with her is that she's like 30th in line for the throne. So she is royal but she doesn't really have a lot of the luxuries that a lot of the royals have in terms of like money and allowances because she's unmarried and also like can't traditionally work because of her place in society but then she kind of ends up getting herself into different jobs like odd jobs that end up leading her to these like sleuthing engagements. She ends up attending a Christmas house party where the host and hostess actually put an advert into the newspaper looking for people of like high society to come and come to the house party and they'll you know have free room and board and get paid something like they want to make the house party look more impressive than it is and they're like having guests come who are paying to have like a traditional English experience for Christmas so kind of a fun premise and she's at this house party and the town's really cute she, she says it's something that's like at the Christmas Carol perfect for Christmas she's super excited when three mysterious accidents happen and three people end up dead. So this is kind of, you know, a lot of accidents to happen in a relatively short time, especially in a small town. She starts to become suspicious and the plot go goes on and progresses. And throughout this book you actually get 12 clues. The author, she is a genius. She manages to keep 12 different clues of Christmas and theme them out. So this is just such a fun read because she manages to keep 12 different clues of Christmas going. It's a really compelling read. You just I was completely blindsided by the ending. It was just fantastic. This is one of my favorite in the entire series and I've read every book in the series except for the newest one that was released. And it's probably one of my favorite cozy mysteries ever, not just for Christmas but just in general. This is fantastic. I would recommend it to anyone looking for a good cozy mystery. And again, it's especially great if you love historical fiction because it encompasses both of those themes into this book. So definitely check out The 12 Clues of Christmas by Reese Bowen. So our next book is one I've read and checked out from the library in the past and it's called Read and Gone and this is part of the Haunted Library Mystery series it's an, and it's only number two in the series so you wouldn't be jumping in too late into the series if you tend to like starting them from the beginning. And this series is by Alison Brooke and it features our main character, Carrie, who is who works at a library in her town and out of nowhere her long lost dad who has really played no significant role in her life shows up 
at her place in the middle of the night looking for her help and she has no real relationship with him um, his name is she just calls him Jim she doesn't even call him like dad not only that but her father Jim is involved in like a lot of criminal activities and so he's begging Carrie to help him get his half of the seven million dollar gem like jewel heist he pulled off on a local jeweler in town and when she refuses him he leaves and she finds out later that he ends up in jail accused of someone's murder so now she's on this quest trying to figure out did he actually do it what happened and then her love interest at the time is an insurance investigator and so he's kind of also involved in the case because there's a lot of like insurance investigation going on with this heist so it's a really fun complex plot I really enjoyed it I'm, I have the third one in this series on hold at my library right now and I'm really looking forward to reading it but this is a really fun sweet Christmas cozy mystery I think the cover is super darling really fun so definitely recommend this book and the series in general I think they're super fun reads also if you enjoy a little bit of a supernatural element this book does have a friendly library ghost named Evelyn who plays like a small part in the mysteries but it's kind of fun just to have like a library ghost so I always kind of enjoy that so again that's another fun component of this mystery series thus the haunted library name. This next book is kind of an unexpected one it's called Mr. Dickens and his Christmas Carol by Samantha Silva. This one was one I just kind of randomly picked up at the library like it wasn't on a to read list or anything. I hadn't seen it like featured or talked about anywhere. I just kind of saw it and was like, oh, that sounds really interesting. I, first of all, I think the cover is super beautiful. I just, I love how you can't see his face and he's looking out and like the dreary kind of England skies and everything. And essentially this book is a historical fiction cozy mystery. It's not as mystery centric as some of these other picks are but there's definitely an element of mystery and some fun twists and turns. He published his latest book Martin Chuzzlewitz and it was a giant flop which is what actually happened in reality it was a big flop like you may not have even heard of that book but he did write that book and essentially he was in huge piles of debt at this time like a lot of family and friends were putting financial pressure on him he was living a very luxurious life because up until that point all of his books and things had been very successful so he was very financially secure as a writer but this flop really decimated his finances and to save his finances his publishers urge him to write a Christmas book however because of a lot of things going on in his life at the time he's in the opposite of a Christmas mood he's kind of turning into a Scrooge himself really and he um, pushes people away out of his life and he doesn't want to write the book but he ends up you know going through this book follows him as he writes the Christmas Carol and kind of talks about fun fictional details of where he could have gotten inspiration for different parts of the Christmas Carol book so if you let if you're like me and you've read or you know watched Christmas Carol adaptations this is really fun because you get to see the little details of where Mr. Dickens maybe could have pulled different ideas and there's just kind of like a fun there's not like it's not like a murder mystery but it does have kind of a mystical element to it um, I don't want to give anything away but it does it does follow him it's a fun historical fiction novel and it's really it gets you in the Christmas spirit it's very like heartwarming tale and it definitely has some kind of like mysterious elements to it that I think make it really enjoyable so definitely check this one out again this is uh, Mr. Dickens and his Carol by Samantha Silva and this was a five-star read for me it was really enjoyable I, I I haven't read anything else by Samantha Silva but I want to now because her writing was so beautifully descriptive you felt like you were really walking the streets with Mr. Dickens it was really fun and especially if you do like the Christmas Carol I think you'll really get a kick out of this book so this next book I have checked out from the library it's called On Borrowed Time a Library Lover's Mystery and this is by Jen McKinley now they actually have a I'm going to talk about this in my Christmas TBR video coming up. She has a act like a very Christmas themed mystery later on in the series. However, this one also takes place in the Christmas holiday season, even though the cover doesn't necessarily suggest that. It doesn't have like a well, it does have some like Christmas decorations on it, but it's a little more subdued than say like the Twelve Clues of Christmas, which is obviously very holiday centric. Um, and this one. Will the ones I've mentioned so far are more heavy on the holiday stuff, but this one is still a really great read I wanted to recommend because it's it's it takes place in the weeks leading up to Christmas and basically the main character, Lindsay, who is a library director at 
I always forget, it's Briar Creek. She is um, a library director there and her brother Jack is supposed to be visiting her. She hasn't seen him in a while and he works in like economics and is kind of always traveling. He kind of has a mysterious job. She doesn't quite know what he does. But he shows up early because he's supposed to be there for the holidays. This is the first time that her and her parents and her brother are all going to be together in a long time, which having, you know, now gone into adulthood, I kind of understand how that feels where maybe not every holiday season you may not get to see every loved one that you want to or everyone isn't all together because people are off, you know, at their in-laws or this and that. So I really, you know, that kind of hit home for me. Um, but this book is really fun because... Jack, her brother, ends up being kidnapped a few weeks before the holidays, so she's trying to, you know, not alarm her parents, not let them know because she doesn't want them to worry, but she's trying to discover what happened to him and just kind of... it's a, it's a very interesting mystery. There is a murder involved, but the main mystery is focused more on the kidnapping and why he's kidnapped and her learning more about what her brother really does and like her brother's day-to-day -day life because she realizes that you know, I talked to my brother, but I don't know that much about him, and I feel like that sometimes happens, especially as adults, like we get kind of um, cozy in our relationships, and maybe we kind of just glaze over the deeper details, and she kind of realizes that with her brother. So this is kind of a fun family-centric uh, story of her trying to get her brother back before the holidays and also just, you know, make sure he's safe and figuring out more about his life and learning more about him and I find that it's just really fun. So it's not as heavily Christmas themed as some of these other ones are but it definitely still has that holiday component to it and, you know, you're really rooting for Lindsay to get her brother back. So I think this book is really fun and this whole series I'm a huge fan of. This is... This is book number five, and I already have book six. Um, I'm waiting for it at the library right now because I love it. It's a great series, so I highly recommend it. Again, it's by Jen McKinley, and it's on borrowed time. Okay, and our last one is more of a relaxing read. Again, this one is kind of, again, by the the um, cover, you wouldn't think, oh, this is a holiday cozy mystery, but it does take place in the weeks leading up to Hanukkah and Christmas, which um, Marla, the main character, and her husband are, this is their first Christmas married together, and they're celebrating an interfaith, uh, like, holiday joining of Hanukkah and Christmas, so I think that's kind of a fun, a interesting thing for me to read, especially as someone who's personally never celebrated Hanukkah, I kind of enjoyed seeing the couple come together and celebrate both. Uh, traditions together. So this book is called Facials Can Be Fatal and it's by Nancy J. Cohen and it's part of the Bad Hair Day mystery series which I have raved about several times on my channel. I love it. This is actually one of the first mystery series I ever read and I just adored it. Um, I'll actually link a video up above for you right now. It talks about uh, five cozy mystery series to start with if you're just getting into it and this series is in that video because it's just amazing. Um, but again, this book basically takes place, Marla is a hairdresser, she owns her own hair salon, and recently they've expanded to include a day spa. And one day, leading up to the holidays, a client dies during a facial, which obviously is worst case scenario when you're running a business dealing with people. That is not what you want to happen. Marla is very stressed out, She's she doesn't know what happened to her, her client Valerie, uh, she's trying to figure out what happens, she's trying to do damage control with her business, she has her, this is her first year married with her husband and his teenage daughter, there's just all these different factors in play right there, and her husband is also a detective on top of that, so he's on the case, and the lady who was murdered, her name is Valerie, and she is the head of like a historical preservation society, so as they go down the trail, they're trying to figure out, is this somebody who was trying to take a hit at the preservation society, is this someone from her past who did it, like it's just a really compelling his story. I really appreciate with the Bad Hair Day mystery series that Nancy, uh, the author, she does a lot of deep dives into different interesting topics, um, like this one is historical preservation. There's been other ones where she's gone really deep into mining topics or like people who steal like copper from like electric um, appliances and stuff, like just things you wouldn't think about. But she always has unique premises, I think, to her stories and her characters are so well fleshed out. So I think this one is really fun. It's not as overtly Christmassy as some of the others, but it's a very fun 
book with a lot of twists and turns and it combines the Hanukkah and Christmas celebration within the book which I really think is a beautiful story. So those are my five recommendations for Christmas cozies that I have personally read and just loved and would highly recommend to anyone looking to enjoy a cozy Christmas mystery read. Please let me know in the comments below what kind of Christmas cozy mysteries you would recommend. Have you read any recently? Are you reading any right now that you love? Which ones are you going to add to your read list? I would love to know down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. I upload mystery content every single week. My entire channel is dedicated to that. My name is Amy Marie. I don't think I don't think I said that at any point, so if you are new, welcome. My name is Amy Marie. I do entirely mystery content on this channel new mystery content every single week and heavily focused on cozy mysteries but we do some other mystery things in general. Basically if you love mysteries this is a channel you'd love so I hope you'll hit subscribe and stay tuned for my Christmas TBR list and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!